This is a Sandy Boy Productions podcast. Hey, everybody. Welcome to All Have Another Podcast with Lindsay Hine. I'm your host, Lindsay, and I'm so grateful you're here today. This podcast is part of the Sandy Boy Productions Podcast Network. Learn more about the network and the shows in it at sandyboyproductions.com. Today, you're listening to a conversation with McKenna Myler, who is a pro runner for ASICS. McKenna ran for BYU, and she became famously known for qualifying for the Olympic trials in the 10K going on to finish 14th in 2021, less than a year after giving birth to her daughter, Kenny Liu. McKenna also became a TikTok sensation in 2020 when she ran a 525 mile, nine months pregnant. She's been running PRs since having her daughter. And in this episode, we talk about what that looks like. And one thing that McKenna is super passionate about is how women train and how we can really take advantage of knowing the different phases of our menstrual cycles to work hard when it most makes sense to work hard and just listen to our bodies and know that they are ever changing throughout the month. She's actually been doing some recent videos on her Instagram, B-E-N-Z-M-A-K-E-N-Z, that's her Instagram. Uh, sharing the information that she's learned from Dr. Stacy Sims. And that's interesting because, well, it's interesting in itself, but also because uh, Dr. Stacy Sims is going to be on this podcast soon. I'm actually interviewing her tomorrow and we're going to be doing a series all about this type of stuff. So it's kind of fun that McKenna and I talk about it in this episode and then we'll hit it hard with Dr. Stacy Sims coming up soon. All right, friends. And this episode of the podcast is supported by Koros. I have been wearing my Chorus watch, the same watch, since 2018. I have the Apex and absolutely love it. They have all sorts of different styles. And the one I use, the Apex, is really simple to use. I love that. It's sleek. And I have a light blue band that I wear on mine that I love so much. And tons of pros, including McKenna on this episode, Wear the Koros watch. Also Molly Seidel, Camille Heron, Sally McRae, Hayden Hawks. So many pros are using this watch and everyday athletes like myself. And you all can go to Koros.com, the best GPS watch on the market. Use the code ANOTHER when you check out and you can add an extra band to your cart. So add an extra band or accessory to your cart before you check out and then enter the code ANOTHER and that accessory will be added on for free. Super fun. That's Koros.com and use the code ANOTHER for a free accessory item. Uh, send me a DM if you have any questions about the Koros watch. I'm Hine 626 on Instagram. Happy to answer any questions about the Apex specifically is what I have. I've heard great things about the pace as well. All right, friends, I really hope you enjoy this conversation with McKenna. Well, today on I'll Have Another, we have McKenna Myler on the show. Welcome to the show, McKenna. Thanks, Lindsay. Glad to be here. We have spent some time getting this interview booked. We've finally done it. (laughs) Okay. Well, to be fair, we're on like different um, time time zones, right? Yeah. And then, uh, but and two two moms with work and kids. It's hard to yeah. get all the same. I'm proud of us. We made it happen. Yeah, we did. We did. I'm thank you for, for excusing my faults. Of, of oh, mine too. <laughs> mine too. It's so funny because on Wednesday, what, what day was it? Was it yesterday? And I was like, would you yeah. like to do it an hour later? I was really asking you because I thought it might be better, but also I remembered that my son had like this fun run at school and it was like right at one forty five, and I was like, well, if she wants to do it later. Maybe I can make it to the fun run and then come back. And so it was like sort of a selfish endeavor as well. It's great. Cause <laughs> you need to do those things. <laughs> um, okay. So you're running a 5k this weekend. Yeah. Yeah. I'm at the sand running meet in Southern California. So that's where I'm at right now. Okay. Are you at like an Airbnb? Um, I'm actually staying at my sister's house. Um, yeah, so that's kind of convenient. <laughs> that's so convenient. Well, I knew you because yeah. you're from Southern California, right? 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. And, and a lot of my siblings have stayed down this way. So it's always nice when the races are in Southern California because I can stay at my parents or my siblings' houses and it's like pretty comfy. So. <laughs> and it's actually like Southern California, like close enough to them. They're within like an hour of the oh, yeah. race. Um, yeah, we're like 15 minutes from this race. Usually the races are up in LA, which is like an hour from us. Um, but yeah, it's really nice. Sound running has been doing more like J Sarah Irvine, uh, tracks and that's like really close to where I grew up. So that's yeah. Awesome. <laughs> um, did you also just get back from Spain? Yes. Like that uh, was happening in the middle of us, like scheduling and rescheduling. <laughs> And yeah, totally. Like, this is another reason why it's been so hard to schedule is because like, I've been like traveling a ton and being like, okay, wait, I think that I can make it work on this. And then I'm like, oh, wait, no, it's not working. Yeah. (laughs) Um, Yeah. Uh, In the middle of driving or something. But uh, yeah, so I did just get back from Spain, which was a quick kind of like business trip. But uh, that was really, really enjoyable as well. Okay. So you ran a 10K road PR. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I honestly, so it was nice to kind of get the wheels going again. Um, I don't think anybody was like really like peaking for that race by any means. Um, or it was kind of just more of a training run for me, which was really fun. I still like ran it hard. Like I wanted to, um, but I, I was really happy with like how strong I felt. Um, and I'm hoping to, you know, keep building on that fitness as like with this 5k and for like future races this summer. So so it's good. <laughs> a good uh, road. I, I mean, to be fair, also, I I didn't really have a good road 10K PR anyway. Okay. <laughs> I think it was like two two or three minutes slower than that anyway. Wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you've, you've made some strides since then. Yes, exactly. <laughs> was that your first overseas trip without – did you bring your baby, Kenny Lou? Oh, that was my first time ever away from her. Oh, which was- my gosh. So hard. Have you been away? Like, I mean, not overseas, trip? like just like, but overnight, it's three, hard. Like three, four days. It, it gets easier when they get bigger, but yeah, yeah, like that first trip away. And I mean, like overnight is one thing or like even like a plane ride to like New York, but you went to Spain. Yeah. Right. I know. <laughs> uh, which I mean, to her, it didn't really make a difference. No. Like she was like, Okay, I, I think she was okay with me being gone for like the first day or two, and then she was like, "Wait, like, are you coming back, or like, what are we, why are you still gone? Why am I still talking to you on the phone?" Um, but but she did good. Like my husband stepped in a lot to help her and kind of just like worked around her schedule. So I think she wasn't uh, too unhappy with that because she she loves being with her dad. So it was good. It How worked long out. were you gone for? Um, I was gone for five days. Okay. Yeah. So it was a quick, quick trip, but again, like you said, it was like the first time being away. And I was like, I think I was probably more sad than she was. Oh it's yeah. Like, for sure. <laughs> I do it myself. Yeah. Like, she like, won't remember a thing. Yeah. 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 Like, uh, the people, uh, actually who were, so we had kind of to do like interviews and some photo shoots and stuff. And some of them were like apologizing, like, I'm so sorry. Like we're keeping you so busy while you're supposed to oh. like, you know, be getting ready for your race. And I was like, I'm, I feel like I have like all the time in the world oh, right yeah. now. <laughs> like I don't have a child. I'm like, like I'm just twiddling my thumbs over here. <laughs> totally. How old is she now? Uh, so she's, she's 18 months. Okay. She, like, fresh, fresh 18 months. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, well, so you mentioned you were at your sister's house and, um, you grew up with seven siblings. Yes. Yeah. That's so I'm, cool. Wow. You did your research. I'm in the middle of seven. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So do you want to have a big family too? Uh, I think I would love to have a big family, uh, but big, is, I don't know. That's like a relative That's term. That's a lot. Seven is a lot. Yeah. So I, I, don't think I, I don't think I have time to have seven. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I think having like four or five would be um, like a good size, like I, I would be happy with that, but I, I always leave it open to like, I, I don't know what my body's going to do. Right. And you know, it's like, if I, if I can't have any more kids, I'll probably adopt. But so, yeah, I guess I will. Like, even if, if I can't have any more kids, like I will get those kids somehow. Yeah. <laughs> like, um, but, but yeah, who knows what, where life kind of takes you, but that would, um, ideally it would be fun to have a big family. Are you still close with your siblings? Yeah, we're all very close. We're all about like a year and a half or two years apart. 
<laughs> yeah, I know. I'm like now having a kid. I'm like, my mom is a champion. You'd be on too. <laughs> Yeah, like what? Like, how did she do this? Um, and and so uh, we're but, but yeah, we're all pretty close because um, I mean because of that age difference. But we also just have like a very open family dynamic um, where everyone's like very interested in what everyone's doing. Like, there's a lot of I don't know. There's just like a lot of love. Everyone is very supportive, and um, we all keep in contact a lot, and just are all connected in, in some way. Okay, so you went to BYU. Yes. Is that where you met your husband? Uh, sort of. So we actually met at a climbing gym. Okay. Um, we both like were casually climbing. Like we weren't either of us weren't like super into it. Uh, but we met there, and then he actually did gymnastics at Michigan. Okay. Uh, and then he served a mission for our church, and when he came back, he just helped. He was like a student coach for the women's gymnastics team at BYU because they didn't. Um, they don't have a men's team and, and then we just kind of kept running into each other in the athlete weight room. Um, and that was kind of how things escalated from there. (laughs) Were you, you were in college? Yeah. So we were, yeah, we were both in college, uh, but we didn't get married until like two years out of college. So we dated on and off for quite a while. Well, when I was stalking your Instagram in your wedding, you're like, just come on down, whoever wants to come. And I was like, (laughs) I need to hear about this wedding. (laughs) <laughs> oh, um, I mean, it's just like an open party. Usually, um, it was like really casual, and especially the one you're probably talking about was the one for Utah. So we did like, okay, we did a more formal one in California with my family. Okay. Um, and you know, yeah, like his family came down and stuff, but I think it was more like, yeah, my area. Um, and there, I mean, it was still pretty informal, to be honest. Like, we were at a park. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and after, I mean, I mean, yeah, like, whoever could come could come. And we just have, like, a free buffet of, like, pizza and um, what else do we have? Like, brownies and, like, a salad and stuff, uh, which I thought was really good, actually. But then in Utah, yeah, that one was, like, very much more like an open house. Almost. Okay, okay. <laughs> Um, we, we set up like teepees, which was really fun. And I, yeah, I actually, <laughs> I actually drove down, um, some ass, some dead Aspen that I found, uh, from Utah to California. And I got stopped at the, like the border and she was like, you're not allowed to take those through sweetie. And I was like, <laughs> no, like, please, like, this is, this is for my wedding. Like I went through so much effort. To, I was like, they're just dead trees. Like I promise like nothing's going to happen. And she, she was like, you can go throw them away over there. Like, please pull over. And so I go like pull over and I like, I'm like starting to cry. Cause I was like, went through so much effort. I just drove like six hours to drive these trees down to for my wedding. Oh and my God. They're just like on top of my roof. And I look around and like nobody was like watching me or like holding me accountable. And so I just started driving and I was like, I'm taking these for my wedding. Was she like a park um, ranger? It's like um it's a border patrol okay. for like fruit and like pests and stuff. Oh okay. So you don't want pests coming through. So maybe I shouldn't have admitted that I did that, but I, I, was, I really wanted these for my wedding. It's going to make it happen. Oh my gosh. Well, could she have like gotten her car and chased you? She wasn't like a police officer. No. Yeah. Cause they're just like waving cars through a ton yeah. and they, they're like, yeah. And I was like, no one, like, what could they, I guess they could chase me, but then yeah. like, so what? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. Just, Not the most important like, thing to probably yeah. chase down. <laughs> <laughs> right that's exactly what I was thinking I'm like she she was like hesitating about letting me throw you know like yeah was like, like, uh, is this worth yeah like I was like I think I'll be okay but. that's so funny <laughs> um okay so tell us about your like career at BYU and and how that went you were there before Diljeet was the coach or did you have Diljeet yes. no I actually just missed her okay. I so I had Patrick Shane okay and um while I was there so I, I have like, I feel like I've had a long journey since high school, kind of trying to figure out how uh, my body worked, like as a matured woman, instead of being a little girl anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, And, and so I was still just like, really trying to figure that out. And just like, maybe not having, I I don't think I ever had like an eating disorder by any means. But um, I just didn't have like the best relationship with food. Um, And 
I, you know, wasn't prioritizing running um, like, like I thought I was, you know, there's kind of these levels of like, I'm just doing everything I can. And then you're like, wait, no, I'm not mm-hmm. doing everything I can. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you just feel like you're trying so hard and then you figure something else out that you can be doing. That's like really helpful. Um, and so while I was at BYU, um, I, I was under Patrick Shane, like I said, and he was a really good coach. Like he just really knew what he was doing. I had some, some really good races for like where I was at. Um, with just like how I was prioritizing running, if that makes sense, like for the work I was putting in, like I had, I had really good races. Like he, he was a good coach. Um, but then I just, I could never really like follow through. Um, and I would just like, I just had all these excuses, um, that was just constantly happening. And, you know, I would get a little bit better each season and then like fall back further and then like get a little bit better and figure things out a little more, maybe with like sleep or, um, you know, or maybe like making my, taking my mileage like a little bit higher. Uh, anyway, so I just like never was an all American. I guess is what I'm saying. Um, I got on the top 10 board for the three K and the five K when I could, you know, like was really like getting some stuff together, but then, I would just kind of get sick or something would happen before regionals. So I just, yeah, I didn't have like a shining star career um, in college is what I'm getting at. Um, And I, I had a lot to figure out post post college. And I, I just, I like, I also had this like really um, significant drive to continue to run. And like, I, I, I think I could like, um, see the things that I was lacking. I just like missed an understanding of how to like close that gap. Um, and so I think, you know, people would say to me, like, you're running a ton of mileage, like, you know, like this is probably, I mean, not saying like, this is as good as you're going to get, but like, you know, that like, these are kind of the results, like this is the area you're really in. And, um, I think in my heart, I was like, no, like, I know, like, the area I'm in is like above that. I just like need to figure out like how uh, to, to change some things. And so um, I guess, uh, yeah, it just took, it took a while to kind of like confront that reality and like to understand what I needed to do to, to change. What, like, what were those things? Like, what did you do? <laughs> you did that Great question. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I was being kind of vague with those answers because, because I've, I've, um, I, I think I am vague sometimes with it because I don't want people to be like, Oh, like this is like the things that I need to do too. Mm, sure. Because like, this was like very specific for me. Um, like I mentioned before, like I didn't have like the greatest relationship with food. And so like I was doing like a lot of binging that was just like, not like I bet there's just like a ton of inflammation that was going on in my body. Like, and I, and I had to kind of like step back, um, and like figure out how to be like, you know, see food more as like science (laughs) and it like still to be enjoyed. Like, don't get me wrong. I still enjoy food a ton. Um, but like, I just like understand how different foods are like reacting in my body. Like, you know, dairy's not going to feel super great, like right before, you know, like a pint of dairy, like a pint of ice cream, like yeah. the night before a workout is like not going to make you feel good. Um, and, and, uh, yeah, I, and, and then I mentioned kind of like as a woman understanding the cycle of like my hormones, um, I have like a very consistent cycle. Uh, and I would, so I don't, you've heard of Dr. Stacy Sims. Oh Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so kind of doing like, I was like, Oh, like I just need to like try harder. Um, and then like, I'll, I'll be better. And I would like have these like breakthrough workouts or like do really well. And I'm I'm, like, I'm feeling so good. Like I'm on top of the world. And then two weeks later I would be like, Oh my gosh, like, I don't know what's wrong. Like, I just like, don't even feel like trying, like, I just don't understand. And then like, I would be so excited because I'd be like, oh, this race is like right before my period. So I'm going to race so well. And then like, I just bonk so hard. And I was like, I don't understand. And so kind of starting to understand that, like, uh, for those listening, uh, that a woman's cycle, if it's regular, um, you have these high and low hormone phases and like, you have to kind of adjust for those high hormone phases where you're not feeling as good. And and when you're on your period, like that's actually when you feel good. And the week after, like 
that's when you like should be nailing things. And, and so kind of like adjusting to that. So for example, like in the high hormone phase, I definitely do more like minute based and very like effort based workouts. Okay. And I'm not like stressed about like hitting certain times. Um, and then when I'm in the low hormone phase, it's like, okay, let's nail some workouts. Like let's really like, I want to know that I can like hit certain times. Um, and then, I mean, back to the high hormone phase, um, with like the eating thing, like I just try to eat like way more, like less inflammatory foods because like estrogen crossing the blood brain barrier, is just like causing more inflammation. Anyway, the high so, hormone is right, be- right before, or right after, right before your period right before. Yeah. Yeah. And so, so if you think of it this way, it's, um, this is how it helps me think of your body is either like, I'm preparing to have a baby yes. or I'm not preparing to have a baby. Yeah. yeah. And like, when you are preparing to have a baby, things are harder because yes. all those resources are going <laughs> toward that. Yeah. And when you're on your period, it's like, oh, I'm not preparing to have a baby. So it's like such a relief. Yeah. I remember like years ago, well, it must've been just 2017 and mm-hmm. I, I ran a marathon PR the day I started my period and I was like so confused and I, you would yeah. think by then I would have had like all that down cause I'd like been running for yeah. so many years, but it was like, oh, totally. oh, it's such a gift that I started my period that day. Like it just took like so much, like <laughs> everything felt better than had it yeah. been like three days sooner. Totally. And I was the same. I, I ran a, a, like personal best in the three K on my period. And then I was just like crying on the medical <laughs> table afterwards with my cramps. And I was like, I'm just so tough. Like, yeah. this is like, like I can't believe I just ran a personal best, but it's like, it all makes sense now that it's like, no, it's actually more set up to run a personal best on my period. But even, what do you, even within the cramps. Yeah. So like you yeah. can like, you know, move your, the way you eat and the way you train around your cycle. Mm-hmm. But like, it's just going to like fall that sometimes you're going to have to race in like the high hormone phase. So like, how do you not let yourself get in your head about that? Oh, so you're asking this at a very convenient time. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is where I'll be at for this 5k. Um, <laughs> but, uh, I, you know, I, I, it's like, you really just have to focus on what you can control, which I mean, maybe you've heard that a lot, like, um, and it seems like so cliche to like say that, but when you start focusing on like things you can control, which are like, you know, I'm going to eat the best that I can, like leading up to this, I'm going to like overhydrate because that's like something else in the high hormone phase that like, you don't even realize that you're dehydrated. Um, in that phase. And that's like another reason you run a little bit slower. Um, and I mean, I, I try to like keep things mentally sharp as well. Um, because it is really easy to fall into like, well, I'm like not going to feel good. (laughs) It's like, no, like let's still like, uh, just race smarter. Um, and, and, um, you know, you might not be able to, um, uh, sorry, when I say race smarter, I mean like, maybe just be like a little more conservative in the beginning. Sure. So you have more. Um, Cause I think sometimes you can get away with like getting out harder when you're like not in the high hormone phase and like recover from it. Um, and so, yeah, I think just like kind of focusing on, on the things that I can do and then just not worrying about weather, not worrying about who else is in the race, not worrying about, you know, that maybe my body like <laughs> won't be like feeling like a superhero. Like I, I'm just going to focus on, performing like the best I can within like the abilities that will be like presented to me that day. Just like a really fun part of racing. It's yeah. Like, okay, this, this is what is presented this day. How do I figure it out? This episode of the podcast is sponsored by Koala Clip. If you are looking for a great way to carry your phone on the go, on the run, it doesn't slip around or move around and it stays dry. Even when you sweat a lot, check out Koala Clip. They also have an apparel line now that is super cute. I'm basically obsessed with the Ren sports bra. Super soft, super comfortable. Go to koalaclip.com and use the code ANOTHER for 10% off your order with Koala Clip. So you mentioned like anti-inflammatory foods. Mm Mm-hmm. What are foods that are like, you're like, probably should stay away from that because they're high inflammatory. And what are foods that you're like, this is anti-inflammatory? 
Yeah. Okay. So to preface, I'm not like a nutritionist. Right. This is like, this is just stuff that I've found yeah. for like myself. Um, and I don't know, seem to be working kind of well. Uh, so stuff. Yeah. Definitely stay away more from like sugar mm-hmm. in the high hormone phase. Okay. Um, um, and, and when I say stay away, it's like, I'm not going to be doing, um, you know, like candy bars before the race. Like, okay, I'm not gonna, like, like I still will have like some sugar, um, just to keep it on like the lower end. Uh, and then, uh, no dairy, uh, dairy is definitely really inflammatory. Uh, and I think that is definitely like genetic just how inflammatory it is to you you know oh sure yeah I I love I eat so much dairy and it's like so good I don't feel like it affects me but maybe it does see that's but that's what I mean like some people are like it doesn't affect me I'm like well I feel terrible so yeah (laughs) but that's great I'm so glad you said that because it's it's not everybody but for me dairy definitely I feel a lot better when um especially in the high hormone phase if I like cut that out okay um and then I love, I love sweet potatoes. Sweet potatoes always make me feel like super good. Um, and like rice um, and like salmon I love like, I don't know. Yeah. Some chicken. Uh, I try not to eat like too much meat, um, but I do like keep it in somewhat. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I don't know. I just, what else do I cut out? Uh, yeah, mostly just like dairy or like high sugar, high, highly processed things. Yeah. Uh, so they don't make me feel super good. Yeah. Um, and then I just try to keep like, so I think one of the tips she gives about being in the high hormone phase is like really making sure you get leucine, um, which is like a protein, which is really high in chicken and almonds. Okay. And so I kind of have been like prioritizing those. Um, and, and like at, as soon as you're done working out, um, and that just like helps you feel better. And then, I mean, like fruits always on the table. Those are always great. <laughs> I have the book and I've read, like I made some proclamation in my Facebook group. I was like, let's read this book together. That's like what I always do. And I get really excited and then I like start reading other things. So I've oh. read like half of the book, but oh, okay. it is a lot of information. Like I feel like you actually need to read it multiple times. Like I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm in school kind of when I'm reading it. Like I'm not going to just like absorb all of this information. Oh, I wrote it down. As soon as I was like, okay, I'm going to use this. I like made a list of like, yeah, this I need. <laughs> yeah. Totally. yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you mentioned that you for sure wanted to continue on running. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so you knew you needed to fix some things. You fixed some things like was was that like, was that hard though to know that like your college career wasn't as successful as you'd hoped it would be? And to say like, no, like I want to do this professionally and not worry about like what anybody thinks, like just like trusting in your abilities and what you want to do. Yeah. Um, okay. So to answer the first part, yes, it's like very, very difficult (laughs) to do that because you kind of feel a little bit silly, like, seeing some people who like have have, like don't move on very well from things um and I'm like am I being that person that was like move on from from something that I just like need to let go um but then also kind of feeling this like like I mentioned before this like really strong desire of my heart that was like no like you're just not done with running like you have more to give because I really wanted to connect with more people uh, which was, it was a huge part of, of continuing to run, even though, uh, a part of me still felt silly about, you know, someone who like is having a hard time with moving on with running <laughs> and you're like, Hey, just move on. You're not that good. You're not making Olympic team. Yeah. Like, um, but I also had to kind of like really dig at the answer of why I was running, um, which was really healing for me um, to be like, why am I doing this to myself? Mm-hmm. Um, and to, yeah, to, to continue to like day in and day out run, you know, doubles, run these long runs, uh, show up to workouts, like where I'm just like not getting paid um, and like realize that I like truly enjoyed the process. Um, that was, that was a big deal um, to, to be in that space of like truly enjoying the process and not, caring so much that the results weren't like what I wanted. Um, and so fast forward to finally like really addressing my reality 
um, when I, when I got to be more honest with my reality. So I, I mentioned that before my husband really helped me with that. We like kind of like sat down and we're like, okay, like, <laughs> like sometimes you kind of like white lie or like fudge, um, your reality basically, mm. because I'm a people pleaser and I just, you know, like really, you know, want to make everybody happy and like had a hard time it's hard putting yourself out there and being like, these are my goals and then not reaching them. Right. It's super vulnerable. Um, and so I finally kind of did that um, and let myself be a bit more vulnerable with, um, you know, wanting to make the trials and, you know, doing the things that I thought um, would help me get there. Like, so like we talked about, like eating the way that my body responded the best, like, really cutting out dairy um, and like prioritizing more like whole foods. Cause sometimes I like, like I said, like I would eat more processed food than in my mind I was actually eating. Like yeah. I was like, I'm, I'm eating like healthy. And then I was like, wait, like facing this reality. I'm like, actually I'm not, <laughs> like, I'm really not eating healthy. I'm like constantly, I don't know, eating packaged foods. Um, and then, so like switching that and then like really prioritizing sleep and then understanding a training cycle, like the macro and micro cycles. Um, that was huge for me. I, um, sorry, this is like a long tangent, but I also uh, wasn't like prioritizing a long run. Like I didn't realize the importance of that. And I was like prioritizing like faster workouts mm. constantly, like VO2 max workouts. And I just never had this like aerobic engine to back up these, these VO2 max workouts. And I didn't understand that. So I think, that was something else like facing that reality and being like, Oh, like I actually need to put in like a lot more mileage of no workouts and then do those workouts. And like that, um, that helped me a lot too. Um, and that, that started with pregnancy, um, and pregnancy, like I got to let go of a lot of times and like anxiety I felt about like hitting times and, and, the uh, so anyway, that's a gift. A lot of, <laughs> a lot of facing reality to, um, continue running. That's a gift that your pregnancy gave you that. So yeah, yeah you went, how old were you when you had your baby? Um, oh, I'm 29. So I was 28. Yeah. Okay. So all those years you were like, just kind of like trying to figure out like, is this, yeah. am I going to do it? Like, am I all in? What do I have to fix? And, 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 and also like amongst that was, I was moving around a lot with my husband. So we moved to Singapore, we moved back to Utah and then we moved to Australia. So it was like, and, we, and then we were traveling just a ton for his work. And so I really wasn't like prioritizing, like, like there's other things going on too, you know? So when you went to Australia, were you, you there for his work or were you there for your own training? Oh yeah. It was for his work. Really? Um, As a coach? Uh, so he's a, he was a sales coach, um, for a company. And then I, I went over obviously with him, <laughs> but, um, I, I found the Melbourne track club was like, you know, like 10 minutes from, or maybe like 20 minutes from where we were staying. And I was like, I need to work out with them. Like, yeah. how do I get it in with them? And so I did this race um, and I got second place in this 5k and the girl who beat me, I was like, Hey, can I come like train with you guys? And she happened to take me to the Melbourne track club. And I was like, wow, this is perfect. <laughs> like, this is where I wanted to be. Um, and so I started training with them and I learned like a ton about training from Nick Badeau, who's the head coach there. He, he really solidified a lot of like my training philosophies now that I feel like worked really are working really well for me. So, yeah, he, um, I just interviewed Charlotte Purdue. He coaches her. Yeah. I yeah. love Charlotte. Yeah. She's so <laughs> yeah. sweet. And so then yeah. you trained with probably like Sinead Diver. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's so fun. Yeah. That's so cool that you got to experience like living in Singapore and Australia before you had kids and like just kind yeah. of to li live free and like just be there and do your thing oh I will say Singapore probably would have been more fun with kids because their the education system is incredible so you know everyone's like raving about Singapore and they're like Singapore is a rad place to live and I'm like yeah, it's cool but trying to run like 100 mile weeks there is not cool it's really hard <laughs> too busy <laughs> just like so so many people uh, no, it's the humidity oh, that the you humidity. just come back drenched. Um, it's really hard. To, yeah, it's like drinking pickle jars, like, oh, <laughs> gosh. like losing electrolytes constantly. Um, yeah, the people, it wasn't too bad. They have, yeah, even had like a trail system that was pretty awesome. And they just have like a lot of innovation and like beautiful scenery there. Um, but it's just like not, so it's an Island or not. Yeah. And, um, 
and but you're not and like beaches and stuff but it's not really like a bathing suit town like okay. everyone is a business and that was hard for me too yeah I, I just hang out in the bathing suit <laughs> everyone's in real clothes <laughs> you're like I can't walk into Target in my sports bra yeah um okay so you run the 525 mile pregnant yeah okay and <laughs> I know you you had like positive reaction negative reaction but what I love from the story is that you came up with those training plans to like yeah. help people get off the couch and get started because they felt like over people feel like overwhelmed to start something new. So tell us about that. Yeah. So the, the training plans, like you said, like there was a lot of, there was some like positive negative comments. Um, so like they would be like, Oh my gosh, that's incredible. Like I can't even get off the couch or like, Oh my gosh, that's incredible. Like I'm so slow. I was like, wait, people are really like deprecating themselves. <laughs> this is not great. Um, and, and so, yeah, so we came up with this training plan that I was like, let's do it like a running training plan that also has this like emotional mental concept um, to like help build a healthy relationship with running. And I think that also went back to kind of the story I was telling before that I didn't have this like super great relationship with food and running that all was like jumbled together um, and having to kind of work through that and seeing the value of, um, you know, associating just like running, running is not for weight loss. <laughs> like, basically it's like one of, that's at the top of the plan. It's like, this is not a weight loss plan. <laughs> like, this is to like enjoy like what your body is capable of and like having your body be more capable than it was yesterday um, and to like really appreciate what your body does for you. And I think, you know, connecting that mentally with running because running is such like a raw sport, like it's just you, um, you know, you don't have to rely on other people that, yeah, I just hoped that that people would be able to um, thrive from that. And so that's how those, those guides started. <laughs> so you, do you feel like that was like your first taste of like, this is one of the reasons why I stuck with it, like that I can connect with people like that and like do something more than just running? Yes and no. Um, so actually, like before kind of anything took off for me running wise, um, I feel like I got to connect with so many great people because I had like stayed in the sport. Um, there's a group down here called the Valor Truck Club. Um, and the coach, his name's George Chavez, and I worked with them since uh, since I graduated college. And they just, they're, all the people that had come through this club, like I was like, these relationships are just mm. incredible. Like if you are not like a great runner, you should go join your local running club and like see what it's about. And it's just so fun. People just show up and like just try their best. And that's like, and I say try their best, but it's like they – you know, pace other people and they jump in. It's just like, you don't bond, you bond with people when you suffer with people. Mm -hmm. And like, this is kind of this like suffering that happens together. Like you could not know someone very well and you just like hammer a workout together and you just are like suffering the same. It's like, you're all of a sudden connected. <laughs> and, and, and so, yeah, I, I feel like I was still connecting with people, but definitely not on the, the same level after um, running that pregnant mile, because then, then I was connecting with people, you know, kind of internationally and uh, yeah, just everywhere. Um, and people were sliding into my DMs mm -hmm. and, you know, asking advice. And I just try to be so honest and like sincere with, with everyone in, in those messages to like really help because I remember feeling kind of lost with like, I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing with like running and pregnancy. Um, and yeah, I just, I also thought like a ton while I was pregnant about like the single moms and just like, mm. just how lucky I guess I, I am to like have the support system that I've had. Um, and so that always just like hits, hits me hard. I'm like, Oh, like, <laughs> moms are just like trying their best. Um, and just, yeah, uh, have kids and, and are just incredible. Um, yeah. Anyway, I can't imagine doing it alone. I know. Shout out hey, to like the single parents Seriously. out there they're just incredible and even though those moms who like their husbands are just working constantly like I don't know and, and anyway so 
yeah, I just love, I love women. I love how strong women are and I love connecting with women and if it helps men too, that's great. I think, you know, women raising their standards also frees men to raise theirs and Oh, or maybe open theirs is a better way to put it. But <laughs> <laughs> so you ran the you ran the trials. So the timeline here, though, is like I knew you said you wanted, you know, you ultimately wanted to run in the trials. But what's the timeline with your pregnancy and COVID and like when the original trials are supposed to be? Great question. Um, so so uh, my husband and I had been trying for a while. And so. I kind of was just like, I guess we'll just like get pregnant whenever we get pregnant. And so it wasn't like a surprise when I got pregnant Mm -hmm. or sorry, opposite. Like it wasn't an accident, (laughs) but it was a surprise. I was like, oh, like, I guess our our plans are changing. Um, And so I kind of just kept showing up and being like, well, I guess I'm like not going to the trials. Um, And like, that's okay. I think part of me too was a little bit like, wow, I'm glad I have this excuse as to like this really valid excuse as to why like I never made the trials Mm. Um, because I was like, maybe I'm just not good enough. Like Mm. that that thought totally was playing around in my head. Um, And and the months kept kind of coming by. COVID happened and there was all this talk about the Olympics being delayed. And I was like, wait, oh my gosh, like I think I could still go after this. So it really wasn't until like April or May, which I was around like 20 weeks or something or so like going going into the second trimester uh that I was like I think that because I I still did want to run competitively after I was like I'll still run competitively I've I've enjoyed the process so far and um like I said I still wanted to keep like the connections I had um and and so uh yeah it, it kind of the plan developed from there I was like well I guess since I still want to run competitively I could still try and go for the trials. Um, I did all my research on, you know, the pregnant women who have, have come back from pregnancy or, or, ah, I hate that word, move forward from pregnancy. They become different people. Um, That's a good and, way to put it. Yeah. It's so much better. Yeah. Like, I like it. We're not, we're not trying to be the same person. Move like, forward. Yeah. That's yeah. good. Okay. <laughs> it's a new way to say it, everybody. Yeah, I know. It's a, it's a good correction to always make in your mind. Like, yeah. There's no bounce back. Like, totally. Don't try to be, yeah. Oh, we're, this we're body is never looking the same. <laughs> this is, there's a lot of things that aren't going back. <laughs> and that's beautiful and great. Like, it's just, it should be celebrated, I think. I mean, obviously, I think it's okay also to mourn the things that are yeah. you know, gone, but like, you should also be celebrating the things that are gained. But anyway. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I kind of just kept an open mind to, uh, what would happen after, because I was like, who knows, maybe like I'll have a C-section or just like, like, you know, the, the timeline just might be different in my mind or uh, what actually happened then like in my mind. Um, so I kind of had like so many plans of like what would happen (laughs) for each scenario. Uh, but luckily I had like a really healthy pregnancy, healthy birth. Um, and I was able to start running like two weeks after and, I just started putting in the mileage um, before, and then started workouts probably around like February. Uh, so I had her at the end of October. Okay. Um, and I tried to get in like a base of mileage. Um, Cause like I said, that was something I wasn't doing before. <laughs> I was just like going straight into workouts uh-huh. um, and, and yeah, and it, it worked out. Got, I made it to the trials. <laughs> I do think that a lot of us, a lot of us get faster after, after baby. And especially yeah. after the first baby, I don't know. There's something about that first baby. You come back yeah. and um, yeah. you can really throw some things down. Yeah. It's really cool. And I think like even just mentally, there's just like a different prioritization that's happening in your mind. Yeah. And you just have like a way healthier perspective. You have a baby who, who doesn't care how fast you run, but then at the same time, you're like, I'm going to be a, your strong mama. So like, you know, you, you throw down and it's, it's great. You got that mama strength. <laughs> so this episode is sponsored by inside tracker. I'm so grateful to have them on board for the podcast. Inside tracker was created by leading scientists in aging genetics, biometrics, and inside tracker analyzes your blood DNA and fitness tracking data to identify where you're optimized and where you are not. 
we put so much time and energy into running or whatever it is you personally are passionate about. And I just think to be able to know what your levels are, especially for your iron and things like that, it's key. So with Inside Tracker, they will take your blood panel and then they will give you those results and give you an ultra personalized performance system that analyzes all the data from your blood, DNA, lifestyle, and it will help you learn how to optimize your body and reach your goals. For a limited time, you can receive 20% off the entire Inside Tracker store when you go to insidetracker.com slash another. If you go to that exact landing page, that should automatically apply the 20%. If that's not working, just use the code another and that will get you 20% off. Did you view like the worth of making it to the trials differently? Yeah. So yeah, that changed a ton for sure. I think, um, the trials before was kind of this, like, it sounded fun. Uh, when I heard what the standards were and I was like, Oh, that would be fun to be like that fast. And then also it was kind of something to tell people as to why I was still running so much, Mm -hmm. you know, to be like, Oh, well, I'm training for like, what are you training for? It's like, like, I like, I felt stupid being like, I don't know. I just enjoy the process. (laughs) Yeah. Like, like, um it's like I guess I'm training for the trials because like what else is there to train for um and you know because of the like the level of seriousness I was taking it they're like wow like what yeah like why would you be training this much um so so after pregnancy it was nice to kind of I honestly didn't talk about the trials like I wasn't telling people that I was trying to make it to the trials um and it was nice to kind of like reprioritize and like you use the word worth like where like stepping onto the line is so freeing Mm -hmm. when you're like, it just doesn't matter the outcome. I'm here for the process. Like we are all here together to like help each other run fast. And this is like, it's fun. And it feels like, I I hate saying this, but I feel like so alive, I guess, whatever, (laughs) being in this like um, sports moment of, of racing and, and, uh, vulnerability and rawness and just like, all right, we're all running together. It's so, um, primal. That's primal. That's Very true. Primal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and I love it. Yeah. So, it, so stepping, stepping onto the line like that is, is so helpful. And yeah, I'm like, you know what, if I don't make the trials, like I'm just so happy with the work that I like put in. Um, and like the person that I was becoming, like I was just, yeah. So, so like, again, this is like this balance of like, it's so great to have these goals and these outcomes, but they're not the value of themselves. Right. Like it's the value is like how you are pushing yourself to get to those outcomes. And when you have to change and, you know, make yourself better, that's just always valuable. And it always is going to add to your character and give you more direction in your life. Where do you think you would get that if you weren't running competitively? Oh my gosh. I, that is such a good question. Well, I just think about it a lot. Like yeah. sometimes, like if I think about like making a career change or, you know, just yeah. like it's time to move on from something or like a, you know, just yeah. a different phase of your life, your kids get older, like things yeah. change. And so like where you're spending your time and energy is different. Yeah. And so it's like, how do you make sure you're doing something yeah. that does help you become that person that you were yeah. saying like to get to where you want to be um I think like getting involved in your community like running helps me get involved in my community for sure mm, I love that. Um, and so I think that that you feel like you're a part of something bigger and like that is so important I think as humans to feel like you're a part of something bigger than yourself and that you're contributing and you're giving back and so in a way, like running is this like, super selfish sport. Yeah. But there's like so many. Yeah. Right. <laughs> like, it's like me, me. I Justin. have to go run for two yeah. hours today. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it also is like all these opportunities to connect with your community and to be involved with your community, um, whether that's like putting on your own race, like Emma Coburn does her own race, you know, where like up in Crested Butte and the community comes and they donate to cancer or something yeah it's a a cancer charity for sure yeah because it's yeah because her mom has it I think but I think the cool thing is that I feel like she's been doing it well before her mom was even diagnosed which is yeah just kind of full circle I guess in a in a way yeah yeah 
that connection is rad. Um, but, but anyway, so yeah, it's just like, if it wasn't running, I guess maybe it would be like dancing or like, I, I do love dancing. Do you I love to dance? You research that much, but <laughs> I don't think I did. And I always say the only reason I stick around Instagram these days is for the dance videos. Oh, they're so good. I wish I was as good as I I would do anything to be that cool. (laughs) Like the Williams brothers. Those are like my favorite. Do you know who that is? The Williams brothers. The Williams brothers. Williams. Williams. Oh, they're like four brothers and they're probably like in their mid twenties or something. And they just always do synchronized dances together. And then they bring in like, um, additional people sometimes too. And I don't know. They just like have a lot of swagger and I'm like, I wish I was as cool as you. (laughs) Amazing. I will have to look that up. That's so awesome. Their videos are addicting. Okay. Okay. So just for yourself. uh, Since high school, I've been into Le Twins. Okay. Uh -uh. They're from France and they both are just super rad looking with like, well, I guess they don't always have froze. Like sometimes like braid it or whatever, but um, yeah, they, they have like really rad hair and they're just like kind of tall and lanky and they just, they're really good at what they do. <laughs> what is, what are they called again? The twins. So like L E S. Okay. Okay. Cause, and they dance together. They're just, they're really good. You should look them up. I will. I just wrote it down. I know my <laughs> son's always like, can we watch those dancing brothers? <laughs> Yeah, that's so great. And I have four boys and I'm like, if you guys want to be that cool, though, you have to like take dance lessons. Like they didn't just like become that good at dancing. Like they've got natural talent, but those those kids have worked really hard for that. Yeah, Yeah, right. I mean, it's not. Yeah, it's not just dance lessons. Like you just got to be doing it all the time. All the time. Yeah, totally. Uh, Where are we going with that? Just the community. and Oh, like you would like to dance. Okay, yeah. yeah, Do you dance? Like, do you like do you break out dancing or? Yeah. (laughs) Let me just do some <laughs> square boxes around my face for you. Um, no, no um, I, I was, I didn't really take classes or anything. Okay. Um, I was just kind of involved in like some like freestyle stuff in high school. Um, and then just continued to do it because I loved it um, on my own and at parties or whatever. I just love dancing. <laughs> love the dance floor at a wedding. Yeah, yeah, it's a great time. <laughs> Does your husband dance? I mean, he was in gymnastics, so. I know, right? He should have a routine down. Um, <laughs> no, uh, no, he doesn't dance, uh, but he enjoys it. He loves it. <laughs> I, I think he'd be pretty good if he wanted to be. <laughs> um, okay, so back to career for just a little bit. You, um, I know the New York City Marathon was like just oh, was not a, a good experience for you. No. It was, it was a great experience though. Like it was oh, so, like you said, all the connections I made, like were just incredible. And like, yeah, the streets of New York, were, like people just showed up and it was just so awesome. And I honestly, like, I felt so good, like from my fitness for the first 20 miles, but yeah, it was, it, the results were pretty disappointing. Yes, you're right. <laughs> you, well, you felt so bad, like the yeah. la- at the end of the race. And, um, did you have a hard time swallowing that pill? Like, okay, I could have done stuff differently with my nutrition, but I obviously like you had the little injury going on as well. So it's like, there were lots of things. Yeah, I know. So the injury really didn't bug me like during the race, which I was super, super lucky about. Um, but it did give me a lot of problems actually post race. I, I like had to take quite a while off and build back up. Um, so anyway, that, so that was a bummer, but, um, nutrition wise. Yeah. I, I think, you kind of, with a marathon, you just kind of feel like you let people down mm. a bit. And like, you let, like, you don't really get to like bounce back and be like, okay, let's just race a marathon next weekend yeah. and like fix what we learned. Um, and so that, that is like very frustrating to me about marathons. Like you have to kind of go through like a whole nother cycle to really race well. Um, and, and so I, I was frustrated that my fitness didn't show. I think that's how I like to put it. It's like, if you have a bad race, it's like, it's just frustrating that like all this work that you put in right. didn't show <laughs> and you want, you want to show that. Um, but, but honestly, like I really, every race is just a learning opportunity. Um, and uh, yeah, like you said, I, I just have more to learn about my nutrition. Um, like not getting it stuck in the cap. Um, <laughs> Oh my gosh. Yes. You guys listening. Yeah. She like literally couldn't get her nutrition out of her bottles for like yeah. six stops. Right. Um, yeah, it was like, 
I, at the first one, I was like, oh man, like I should have practiced this more. Like, this isn't really coming out. Like, I'm not very good at this. Um, and then the next one, I could like hear it hitting the top and I was like, oh no, like it was like, there's hard. too much. Yeah. Like it was too much in there. Or, like it just didn't dissolve. Like what is going on? And then I missed the next one. And then the next one I like unscrewed the, and which I, when I missed the next one, I was with Stephanie Bruce and she was like, it's okay. Like you'll be fine. I'm like, no, like I just missed like the three she most didn't important. know <laughs> that you just missed the other ones. Oh. Yeah. Um, and so the one after that, I unscrewed the cap um, and it just got all over me. And, and really in hindsight, um, like above the nutrition, it's like, I should have like taken the Gatorade that was like free. Right. <laughs> like at least get something in. Yeah. Like I should have stopped and just like unscrewed the bottle and drank it. You know, if I really needed to like, you know, take like 20 seconds to do that. But in your mind, in my mind, like I'm a 5k, 10k runner. Like I just was like, I need, I don't have time. Like I just keep going like every second counts and you're just not thinking straight. And I was like, I, I haven't worked with Gatorade. I don't know if that's going to work with my body. And just like, I just kept like plowing through and it was just like, it was too late by mile 20. And you know, <laughs> could have, I could have thought better, thought through things better, I guess. <laughs> Why did you decide to do the marathon? Um, you know, when you sign a contract, there's just like a lot of hype around road races. Yeah. Um, and, uh, there's just like, I mean, I've always, I really loved long distances. Um, and I think it's really cool to be in, like in a race where everybody is in the race with you. Like, it's so cool. Yeah. Um, but it's like, again, it's that connection and community thing that's going on, uh, to be involved in that. And and New York just sounded fun. Like people kept telling me how hard New York was. And I, I am really drawn to that. That's like, if you want me to do something, you just can keep telling me how like hard it is. I'll be like, yes, I'm going to do that. Then yeah. I'm going to do that. <laughs> like, they're like, maybe you should do a different one. Like first, I'm like, nope, like I want to do New York. Um, and I love the hills. I just wish I felt like a little bit better on them. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so that's kind of why I ended up deciding like it was like oh like let's do some road races uh there's more money in road races um and just they like uh, if you're in the elite section they like fly you out and like house you um which like they don't do that for track mm. um, and and so it's it's really helpful um to be kind of taken care of <laughs> for a race <laughs> but yeah um the ASIC sponsorship did that come at right after the trials yeah. So, I mean, I, I was talking to them before the trials. Okay. Like I, even, I ran in ASICs for the trials because okay. um, I, I was chatting with them. Uh, but yeah, I didn't officially sign until after. And that happened because of my agent, Bob Wood. Um, so after I ran the qualifier in Portland, in Portland sorry, um, that's where I ran 32 of three. I, that kind of put me on the map of like 10K girls. And so I was like talking to some uh, fellow athletes in Utah and they had mentioned their agent and I yeah, it kind of sparked my mind like, oh, like maybe I should get an agent. Like that would be helpful. And so I reached out to Bob Wood and he's been helping me. He's been in the game a long time and he's great. He's really good. We can't. Yeah. He's an agent. I don't, I don't know the name. Um, yeah, so he actually, I think he only has like three or four athletes right oh, now. Oh, okay. Like, he literally is like one of the first agents in the running game. Like That's I want to say like- Super old he, school. Yeah. Uh-huh. Been yeah. For a long time. He's just, yeah. He's had so many athletes, but now he's like retired and now only has, so I had to kind of be like, will you please take me? <laughs> yeah. Um, and I think he wanted to work with me too. Uh, yeah. Because- yeah, had had heard I was looking, um, and he only really wanted like one or, yeah, like he's works with Jared Ward. Um, okay, so he keeps things close and simple, and it's, yeah, it's really good working with him. Um, well, so you're gonna be running in the trying to make the World Championships team. I'm assuming this summer. That's coming yes. up May 27th. Oh uh, yeah, it is. Coming that is up. so soon. I know. <laughs> three weeks, three and a half um, weeks. Yeah. Oh, no, no. Oh, sorry. That's Four the 10K. 10K. 10K championships are May 27th. Yeah, that's what I meant. Um, are you doing yeah. the 10K, right? So oh, no. um, they lowered the qualifying time. Oh. And I didn't really have time um, to do a 10K. Okay. So I'm going to like still declare and see if I get in because maybe like 
enough people won't be doing it. Okay. Um, but because, uh, yeah, I ran 32.03 and then 31.45 is the time. Okay. Um, and, and like I said, I had that Achilles issue and I just yeah. like I'm just getting back into like running where I was before. OK. Um, and and so I. I, I'm keeping the door open to to opportunities. It would be awesome to compete for the world championship, but like I also know there's a lot more opportunities, so it'd be good. Good, yeah. You're doing sound <laughs> running this weekend. There's lots of yeah. opportunities. Totally. Mm-hmm. Um. Okay. W- well, we always wrap up the podcast with these end of podcast questions. What is something professionally or personally you would like to do that you haven't done yet? Okay, so I would love to bike through Sweden. I have not been there. My husband's been there and it looks so beautiful. <laughs> and I, I would really, really like to run through Sweden. And then I, I mean, what we just mentioned, like professionally, I would love, I really need to break 32 minutes in yeah. the 10K because like, come on, I'm like right there. <laughs> Again, yes. I, I was in, I'm in better shape now. Like it should. should do you think you'll do another marathon soon? Um, Not soon, but I think I'll oh, for sure do Not like one. this year soon, you mean? Yeah, probably not this year. I kind of want to just focus on the shorter road racing stuff. Yeah. 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 What's the best, most recent book you've read? Um, The Great Brain. No, I'm just kidding. The Great, well, the great Brain is like this kid's story that me and my oh, husband sure. read each other. Yeah. <laughs> we don't even read it to our kid. We yeah. read it to each other. I love it. <laughs> it's just entertaining. It's like a really funny book. But uh, the – yeah – I really love uh, The Big Leap. That is by, I think it's Gay Hendrickson. Have you heard of it? Uh-uh. So that is kind of just about like breaking barriers um, with after you've succeeded. Okay. So like when you succeed and then kind of like what's stopping you from like really like going into the zone of genius is what he calls it. So everyone kind of lives in the zone of excellence, like where they're they're doing well, but like there's a lot of things that like limit them. Anyway, so it's it's really good book. You should read it. Like have oh, it I break read through. It. That. Yeah, so I feel good. very stagnant in my podcasting life. <laughs> Maybe it'll like, help me. Yeah, like what you're doing is great, but then like you, <laughs> you know, can reach this zone of genius where you're really, really nailing it. <laughs> Has that like helped you with your running? Yeah, totally. Okay. So something that would happen um, is my back would start pinching like before big races, mm-hmm. and we're like, I think this is like a big lead problem where it's like just like mentally you like need this excuse Mm -hmm. for like why you're not going to do well. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I kind of like had to like really address that. And actually my back like doesn't, isn't pinching, you know, for this race. Like, I don't know. So I think I've I've addressed it a bit, but it is hard because you have these like real excuses that are happening. um, And that would be like, this is me like subconsciously manifesting like an excuse for myself. Anyway. So it's good. It has helped a lot. (laughs) Um, is it super sciencey? No, not at all. It's oh. a very good read. Mm-hmm. Okay. I can't do like yeah. this, like the book Endure. Yeah. That's the one book oh, I yeah. always talk about. Like I could not get through that book, Alex Hutchinson. I know everybody loves it and I'm like, it's just too it much good. research. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, right. Um, okay. Who is some, two more questions. Who is yeah. someone fun, motivating or inspiring you would like to have coffee, tea or cocktail with? Um, okay. So, you know, who I love is Hugh Jackman. Oh, okay. I, like I that. listened to a podcast with him and I like immediately told my husband that I was like, I think we would be really good friends with the Jackmans. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I'm like, I Make think that that we have like really similar intensities about things that I was like, I feel like, I mean, he just like, seems like a super nice guy. He's a very, yeah. Do you remember what the podcast was? was? Uh, yeah, it was Tim Ferriss's podcast. Oh, oh, he was on Tim Ferriss. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I haven't listened to that in so like right when I started podcasting, I listened to his show a lot. Yeah, um, he's good. He's really yeah, good. he's very very good at what yeah. he does. Um, but yeah. I haven't listened in a long time, so it'll be fun to go back and scroll through like who's been on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You should. He's good. Um, Tim Ferriss or Rich Roll? Who do you like better Ooh. as an interviewer? They're similar-ish. Um, I know they are similar-ish, and I I've actually had some really valuable ones from Rich Roll. Yeah, but I would say that I stay more entertained with Tim Ferriss. I think so. Maybe too. just yeah, just because like the guests he has there, there's more variation. Yeah, um, but they're both really good interviewers. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think if I were to pick, I haven't listened to either in a very long time. But if I were to pick one, if I had to pick one, I think I'd go Tim Ferriss. Yeah, 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. I do uh, love it. Yeah. <laughs> um, Lewis House is another one in that kind of category. His episodes aren't nearly as long, though, because Tim Ferriss and Rich Roll go, like, super long. long. Totally. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, what's your last message to leave with our audience today? Oh, good question. Um, I mean, I think my whole spiel really is, like, you know, the – who you're becoming is just like so important over like the outcomes that are happening in your life. Um, Yeah. And like you said, like if you're not a runner, like finding ways to just like be involved more with like the people around you, I think it just enriches your life. And like the people are so much more important than like any outcomes that we're looking for. All right, friends, thanks for being here today. Thanks McKenna for coming on the show. You want to make sure you're subscribed to the show because we have that series coming out soon and we're going to start it off with Dr. Stacey Sims. We're going to be talking about hormones and cycles and perimenopause, what it looks like to train as a female. It's going to be a great series. Uh, The nutrition series that we recently did has inspired myself and Emma, my awesome assistant and editor, to bring some more series to the table because it seems like... Uh, Many of you have really enjoyed that series. And so we want to keep doing what people are telling us they enjoy. Uh, All right. You can find me on Instagram. I'm lindsayhine626. I'd love to connect with you. You can find Sandy Boy Productions on Instagram, Sandy Boy Productions, and learn more about all the podcasts in our network at sandyboyproductions.com. Don't forget, I have a podcast for parents. It's called Why Is Everyone Yelling? And this week we had an episode come out with David Thomas talking about raising emotionally strong boys. It's a powerful episode that I hope you'll go give a listen to and send to anybody in your life who might be raising boys. All right, friends, have a great rest of your day and a wonderful weekend. And as always, we'll see you next Friday.